The Book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text traditionally attributed to the patriarch Enoch, Noah's great-grandfather. The Book of Enoch contains unique information regarding the origins of demons and Nephilim, why some angels fell from heaven, why the Genesis flood was morally necessary, and a prophetic explanation of the Messiah's thousand-year reign. But why was the book excluded from the Bible and labeled unfit for Christian doctrine? What mystery is being revealed in the Book of Enoch that all its manuscripts have been seized and invalidated as apocrypha? Stick around to find out. The tentative date it was written. Three volumes of the book are traditionally attributed to Enoch, including two Enoch and three Enoch, which are distinct compositions. According to the preponderance of Jewish and Christian church bodies, none of the three texts is considered canonical scripture. The earliest sections of one Enoch, primarily in the Book of the Watchers, date to approximately 300-200 BC. The most recent section, Book of Parables, likely dates to 100 BC. By the 4th century, the Book of Enoch was largely excluded from Christian biblical canons. Today, only the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church and the Eritrean Orthodox Tewahedo Church regard it as scripture. Jude 1 14, 15 references. Enoch, the seventh from Adam. And Enoch, the seventh from Adam, also prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord is coming with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds that they have ungodly committed and of all their harsh words that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This verse depicts the torture that awaits those who have not received the promise of the Divine Father. Compare this with Enoch 119, translated from the Ethiopic, also found in the Qumran Papyrus. And indeed, he comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, and to destroy all the ungodly, and to convict all flesh of all the works of their ungodliness that they have shamelessly committed as well as all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. The Book of Enoch Synopsis The Book of Enoch is divided into five distinct main sections. The first section of the Book of Enoch describes the decline of the Watchers, the angels who sired the Nephilim, angel-human hybrids. The remainder of the book details Enoch's revelations and his journeys to paradise through travels, visions, and dreams. More specific details include 1. The Book of the Watchers 2. The Book of Enoch's Parables, also known as the Similitudes of Enoch. 3. The Astronomical Book, also known as the Book of the Heavenly Luminaries or Book of Luminaries, is a compilation of astronomical information. 4. The Book of Dream Visions is also known as the Book of Dreams. 5. The Letter of Enoch, the Book of Watchers. This section of the Book of Enoch details the collapse of the Watchers, the angels who fathered the Nephilim, Sieb, the Beni Elohim, Genesis 6-1-4 and Enoch's travels through the realms. Western academics say this section was written between the 4th and 3rd centuries BCE. The introduction to the Book of Enoch describes Enoch as a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God, so that he saw a vision of the Holy One in the heavens, which the sons of God showed to me. And from them I heard everything, and I knew what I saw. But these things that I saw will not occur for this generation, but for a future generation. It discusses God's visit to earth on Mount Sinai with his retinue to judge humanity. It also describes how the luminaries rise and set in order and in their own time without changing. The book's first section describes the interaction between fallen angels and humans. Semiazaz commands the other 200 fallen angels to take human spouses to bear us children. This leads to the appearance of the Nephilim, Genesis, or Anakim, Anak, giants as described in the book. And they became expectant, and they bore enormous monsters 300 ells tall, who devoured all the wealth of humanity. And when humanity could no longer support them, the giants turned on humanity and devoured them. And they began to transgress against birds, animals, reptiles, and fish, devouring one another's flesh and drinking another's blood. It discusses the instruction of humans by corrupted angels, in particular Azazel. And Azazel taught men how to make swords, knives, shields, and breastplates, as well as the metals of the earth and the art of working them, and bracelets and ornaments, and the use of antimony, and the adornment of the eyelids, and all types of precious stones, and all coloring tinctures. And there arose a great deal of godlessness. They engaged in immorality. They were led astray, and they became corrupt in all their ways. Semjaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armoros taught enchantment resolution. Barakijal taught astrology. Kokabel the constellations, Izakiel the knowledge of clouds, Arakiel the signs of the earth, 
Shamsiel the signs of the sun, and Sariel the course of the moon. Archangels Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel are also depicted pleading with God to adjudicate the inhabitants of the universe and the sinful angels. God then sends Uriel to inform Noah of the impending catastrophe and what he must do. God commands Raphael to incarcerate Azazel and instructs Gabriel regarding the Nephilim and the imprisonment of fallen angels. The Book of Parables. The Book of Enoch, chapters 3771, is called the Book of Parables. These chapters are at the crux of the scholarly debate. The Book of Parables appears to be founded on the Book of the Watchers. Still, it presents a later development of the concept of final judgment and eschatology, which is concerned not only with the fate of corrupted angels, but also with the fate of evil rulers of the earth. Son of Man is the eschatological protagonist in the Book of Parables, who is also referred to as Righteous One, Chosen One, and Messiah, and who rests on the throne of grandeur during the final judgment, the Astronomical Book, four fragmentary editions of the Astronomical Book, 4Q208-211, were discovered at Qumran, the 2nd century BC beginning date for 4Q208 and 4Q209, provides a terminus antiquem for the astronomical book of the 3rd century BC. The Qumran fragments also contain material absent from the later editions of the Book of Enoch. This book describes the movement of celestial bodies in the sky, as revealed to Enoch by the archangel Uriel during his travels to heaven, and it describes a solar calendar that was subsequently described in the Book of Jubilees, which was used by the Dead Sea sect. This calendar made it impossible to observe the ceremonies concurrently with the Jerusalem Temple. The year consisted of three 64 days, divided into four seasons of 91 days each. Each season consisted of three 30-day months, plus an additional day after the third month. Thus, the entire year consisted of precisely 52 weeks, and every calendar day fell on the same day of the week. Every year and season began on Wednesday, the fourth day of creation described in Genesis, the day on which the sky's lighting seasons, days, and years were created. The Dream Visions The Book of Dream Visions, which contains a vision of Israel's history down to what the majority interprets as the Maccabean Revolt, is generally dated to the Maccabean period, approximately 163-142 BC. According to the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, it was composed before the Biblical Deluge. First Dream Vision on the Deluge, Second Dream, Vision of Enoch, the history of the world to the establishment of the Messianic Kingdom, the fall of the angels and the demoralization of mankind, the advent of the seven archangels, the punishment of the fallen angels by the archangels, and other non-canonical books. In the second dream vision, there are animals. The second dream vision in this section of the Book of Enoch is an allegorical account of Israel's history, in which animals symbolize humans and humans symbolize angels. According to the works of R. H. Charles and G. H. Shaw, the following is one of several hypothetical reconstructions of the dream's meaning. White symbolizes moral purity, while black represents sin and contamination by fallen angels. Black bull is Japheth. God is the lord of the livestock. The fallen star could be Samyaza or Azazel. Elephants are giants, camels are Nephilim, asses are Eliud, and sheep are believers. The ram is the leader, the dog is the Philistine, and the tiger is Arimathea. Assyrians are hyenas. Ravens, crows, represent the Seleucids, Syrians, while kites represent the Ptolemies. Possible Macedonians for eagles, Ammonites, and Moabites for foxes. The Letter of Enoch. Some scholars propose a date between 170 BC and the first century BC to determine when these books were written. This book contains apocalypse of weeks, exhortation, and additional subheadings. Some fallen angels listed in one Enoch have alternative names, such as Ramiel, Morning of God, who becomes Azazel, and is also referred to as Gadriel, Wall of God. In chapter 68, Arachiel, Earth of God, is transformed into Aritztikapha, World of Aberration. Azaz, as in Azazel, signifies strength, so the name Azazel can also signify God's strength, but the usage most likely means impudent, expressing fortitude towards, which results in arrogant towards God. It is also a central tenet of contemporary thought that Azazel is Satan. Important to this identification is the similarity in meaning between the original name Ramil and the common Latin name for Satan in Christianity, Lucifer, Morning Star. A scholar asserts that the names of the angels appear to refer to their condition and functions prior to the fall, and provides a list of the probable meanings of the angels' names in the Book of Enoch, observing that the vast majority of them are Aramaic. The suffix, El signifies God, 
and is found in the names of spirits of high rank. The archangel's names end in El, such as Uriel, God's radiance, and Michael, like God. Gadriel, Romanized, Gator Ha'el, lit God's wall, is listed as one of the slain watcher's commanders. He is allegedly responsible for Eve's deception. According to scholars, the name means the aid of God. Why is this ancient Bible book ignored and even forbidden by the church when it contains so much historical information about our foundation? It has already become apparent that one of the reasons for the book's banning is most likely because it begins with a warning to humanity describing the divine judgment that will befall those who are not worthy of salvation. The story explains the appearance of the murderous giants also known as Nephilim, who roamed the earth as described in Genesis. They also explained the flood. God nevertheless warned Noah and delivered the people. The accounts of Enoch's travels through the heavenly kingdoms, which describe the heavenly powers and the cruelty that awaits the wicked, are also apt to be detested. Was the problem with the church anchored in the fact that it frightened the devout with such detailed information? Perhaps some of these details are inconvenient. The book speaks directly and candidly about aliens with advanced technology who visited Earth. They passed on their technology to their hybrid offspring, which had a devastating effect on humanity. The book describes in detail how and why the Great Deluge destroyed all traces of this. Undoubtedly, there is something in this book that troubles many individuals. How did Enoch ascend and descend on his excursions to and from heaven? Is this not evidence of ancient aliens visiting Earth? Can we then presume that these were extraterrestrials and that Enoch communicated with a sovereign? What do you make of the revelations given to Enoch on his trips to heaven? Let us know in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell.